that your girlfriend will go soon die. How do you know that somebody is going to die? Like, are you bored? Mm. Because it's not just about finding someone whose genotype matches. It's also finding someone who has the mind for it. Mm. Yes, because reality is, if you see me when I have a crisis, <laughs> if you don't have lion hearts, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you the worst I've heard. What happens when we're having sex and she has a breakdown? <laughs> this is the first time I'm Ouch. publicly admitting it. Mm. <laughs> it's the first time I'm publicly admitting it, but it's the truth. I um, actually came back to Nigeria because I was planning to get married. Hello and welcome on the EBUN show. On this episode, we're finally going to have closure on this marriage pressure issue. So, in season one, we had marriage pressure, and I had a guest who came to say how she wasn't pressured, the things she did not to be pressured into marriage. But you see, I have amazing people on the EVN show. There are two of these people who matter to me, who will give you feedback. Like, they don't even look at your face. <laughs> One, Ruth Idudu, then Shola Oribolo, they came to tell me that, eh -heh, you're talking about marriage pressure. You should talk to people who are actually feeling the pressure. <laughs> And so Shola is here. She's going to be doing justice to the matter, talking about real life issues, our own experiences on this matter. Shola Rimoloye is an HR expert and of course the host of DASP Network. You're going to have some juice on this episode. So carry your chair, sit down and get some juice. Charlie, hey. <laughs> there's nothing I've not done without your name. Shirley Lequay. <laughs> I know. Yeah, so we're here. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year. <laughs> you don't get it. It's been like forever we like, try to be here. Be here, yes. Thank you for finding time to come. My She's pleasure. a really busy person. My pleasure. Pleasure. So, you know, if you apply to some places and you didn't get it, she's the one. Okay, okay, so Shola is uh, being one of those who give me feedback the most. She, 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 she follows the EVUN show. And so, when, <laughs> yes, <so. laughs> when we had um, that discussion about marriage pressure and mm -hmm. I had, um, I am fair, Lua Yes. Yeah, I got feedback like we didn't really settle. There was no closure mm -hmm. to that matter because uh, my guests um, didn't really feel pressured. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, being single is a thing. Yeah. And experiencing pressure is a thing. Yeah. So that's why we're here to bring the other angle mm -hmm. to this whole matter. Mm -hmm. So once Shala came today, I asked her, is there pressure? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to ask her in front of the camera again. Is there pressure? Um, so there used to be pressure. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. There used to be pressure. And um, I, I, I would say that mine is being more of self-inflicted pressure. Okay. Yes. Uh, and the reason is this. My mom got married at 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, mm, that's yeah. early. <laughs> <laughs> you know my age, you know that. She got married at 24. My elder sister got married at 26. A lot of people say that I don't be like someone that has an elder sister, but it's fine. I have one. <laughs> <laughs> and then my auntie got married at 26. So, so it's like there's a pattern of that mid-20 kind of thing. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I actually had an early education to even make it worse. I was done with school in my early 20s. So there's that family perception that, okay, you're done with school. You know, I'm not even talking BSc. I'm even talking MSc now. You're mm. done with school. Iwe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then what's left? Mm -hmm. What are you waiting for? What The only thing left is for you to marry, right? Mm -hmm. I get married um, almost immediately. And you wanted to marry? Well, yes, I wanted to marry because background story. I came back to Nigeria because I wanted to get married. Oh. Yes. Mm. Yes, so <laughs> that's an interesting story. Anyways, the person is married now and has a kid, but then... <laughs> oh, someone made you come back. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I'm Ouch. publicly admitting it. Mm. <laughs> it's 
it's the first time I'm publicly admitting it, but it's the truth. Um, I actually came back to Nigeria because I was planning to get married. I was so the relationship had gotten to that point where you felt yes. the next was marriage. Yes. yes. The person ghosted you? No, they didn't ghost me. Um, I don't know if it's something that we can go really deep into, deep into the, okay. the conversation, but it wasn't a ghosting thing. I think it was just the fact that at that particular point in time, our priorities sort of shifted. You know, you hear that people travel and people leave, and then there's a change in perception as to how you actually view life. Mm -hmm. I, I think I sort of started having like a change in perception about life and what I really wanted out of life. Oh. He's a great and fantastic guy. I mean, in all, with all due respect to him. Yes, we had our issues. Yes, we had our fallout and all of that. But I, I think majorly it was just the fact that I wanted more out of life mm. than what I think he could offer me. Okay. Do you understand? So we just sort of forcefully just had to go our separate ways. Mm. Because reality, I think he was actually going to propose. Mm. Yes. So we had to go our separate ways. And then that happened. And then there's been another relationship as well. Well, that one broke because he couldn't handle it. So when I say couldn't handle it, he couldn't handle my gender type. Okay. Yes. So for those of you who know Shola, if you've been or if you've not been following her, she she does this uh, DASP. DAPS network. What is DASP? Diary of a Sickle Cell Patient. Mm -hmm. DAPS network. Yes. So now you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it took me time to know that yeah. she has sickle cell mm -hmm. because she has this very bubbly personality. She's everywhere. You can <laughs> did you have told her that? I didn't know. I she know. didn't even believe that I didn't know because <laughs> Like, I don't even see it all over her. Like, she's so energetic. She's so... Mm -hmm. You're doing a good one. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, so that also... Yes, the health issue, too, mm -hmm. is a factor. It's a big factor. Mm. Because it's not just about finding someone whose genotype matches. It's also finding someone who has the mind for it. Mm. Yes, because reality is, if you see me when I have a crisis... <laughs> if you don't have lion heart, <laughs> she said lion heart. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have lion heart, you will run away. Hmm. That's the truth. So I think this person found me um, one of those days when I didn't. I was really down. And you know, when I think about it, when I like sit down and dwell on it, like, okay, why did this person leave? He didn't even see me at the worst of the worst. Mm. I mean, maybe my parents should have packed their bags <laughs> and left Nigeria if that was it with the worst of the worst that they've experienced. But he didn't see me at the worst of the worst. He only saw me at the recovery stage, technically. And he just felt, look, they can't handle this it. is too much. Like, mm. you know, because the, the question is, what happens if this happens on a daily? What do I do? How do I go about it? I know someone who told me that, look, Shola, I'd really love to be with you, but... I don't think I can handle the pressure that comes with your genotype. Hmm. So yeah, that's that in and of itself affects you. Um, I mean, as a person, it just sort of starts to put pressure on you because you start to ask yourself, um, so what's missing in me? Like, what's I mean, you can't see me on the street and not say that this year I'm more torn now. I mean, let me like babe. I mean, 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 I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, but mm -hmm. and then you now realize that okay, so we're getting into the nitty gritty of things, mm -hmm. and people are not able to own up to it because they just feel that it's going to be a lot of stress, right? It's going to be a lot, a whole lot of pressure on them, you know. And the Nigerian factor sort of adds to it. I tell people why because I mean, if you're not in Nigeria, the worst that happens is you call it ambulance, ambulance takes you to the hospital. But here you have to start thinking about hospital bills, you have to start thinking about which hospital do we go to, you know, you have to start thinking about, okay, so what happens when she gets pregnant, will she be able to deliver by herself, what happens when, you know, I really need her to do something, you know, she's not able to do it, let me tell you the worst I've heard. What happens when we're having sex and she has a breakdown? <laughs> oh. Yes. Someone said that to you. Yes, yes. Like... What happens when you have that kind of breakdown? What do I do? I mean, I get confused. This is not just something that comes when you're having sex. <laughs> okay. <No idea. laughs> I mean, it's, it's very interesting conversation. Yeah, it's here. good that you're laughing about it. Um, but it must have taken its toll on you. Yes. Um. I mean, not the sex part, really. Not the... No, the, the, the whole things. thing. Yeah, the whole... The whole pressure thing. Because you see, your. Now it is it is beyond not finding someone you like. Mm -hmm. 
it is that sometimes you even find someone you gel with mm -hmm. and the person cannot cope with your gen or the person your genotype and the person's genotype cannot even match okay so that's even one level mm -hmm. where even like like you know first and foremost you meet people and then you say oh you what's your genotype like that's like the first thing that's even like the first leg you, you want to clear out let's just let's not even get it twisted mm -hmm. because i've been a factor of a relationship where i didn't know the person was years and i thought this was something really good like really really good i found out until until one year after right so that in and of itself broke me like guy you knew my genotype why we why did you carry on on a deceitful relationship knowing fully well that this wasn't going to lead to anything right but that's like at this stage i've even gone past that this is gone past the question of what's your genotype so what's your genotype is like elementary stage that's like mm. first process mm -hmm. you now find someone who's aa who's a perfect fit in terms of the medical aspect you now have to start asking yourself do you truly love this person do you really want to be with this person okay so let's assume that this person ticks all the boxes all the women box that we have like mm -hmm. he must be this that and all of that the next question you ask yourself is this person has the mind to carry it because the pressure the person would also face is a lot you've had situations whereby okay so instance this person that i was dating that i didn't even know was AF. Um, what finally led to our breakup was his mom said she never wants to ever see me again in her entire life. And then I wondered, okay, so what did I do? What, what, what could have led to that conversation? Like, why? Then he now told me he's AF. Now, the perception of even the parents, like, how would they handle it to know that, oh, my son is about to get married to someone who has a health problem. Like, it's not even that it is in the middle of the marriage, the health problem started. You already know. Are you sure you want to go on ahead? So the person has to make up his or her mind that, look, I want to do this because whether or not... And I'm ready to stand my ground, yes, irrespective yes, of what comes. Yes, because whether or not external pressures would also affect you. Mm. Like, people would ask you. I know, I know a friend of mine that when she was there was someone she was dating and his mom said to, his mom said to her that your girlfriend will go soon die no why the story is on my blog like on my page you can go and listen to it that your girlfriend will go soon die how do you know that somebody is going to die like are you god are you i don't get it so there's that because that person is also going to face so much of pressure worst case you now have doctors as friends I was in the UK and I know someone who, his friends were doctors. They know that this thing can be managed with proper care. And they were dissuading him from marrying the girl because she's SS. They're like, guys, it's a lot of work. Are you sure you're up for it? So you understand that anyone who is taking that bold step, see, it's, it's a different step to say, oh, I just want to get married. To get married to somebody with living with sickle cell is a bolder step, like a lion heart step. You have to be ready to face every pressure that comes your way because people are ready to say anything anything whatsoever see me I, <laughs> like i don't even know what to say <laughs> no i know so that's where the pressure is this pressure isn't even just about oh okay i want you to settle down yes there is that part of oh you should settle down because uh family trend you know, yeah like pattern you said. Mm -hmm. and all of that but there's also the pressure of you don't just want to sit down with anybody that would return you back to your father's house tomorrow at the slightest break of a breakdown, hmm. right? Not the one that will wake up tomorrow morning and say, oh, he no longer loves you because you, he, you are more than he bargained for, hmm. right? And there's also the part where you have to balance that. I also want more from life. I'm not someone who's just going to sit around and, and wallow in pain hmm. and sorrow and say, oh, because I'm sickle cell, I just want to, you know, live a simple life. Mm -mm. But, you know, the, the parts of you that we see is this bold girl who gets things done, good at our work, mm -hmm. you have friends, you're mm -hmm. bubbly and all of that. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking for you to tell us, to be able to identify with someone who is watching you, the emotional toll it has taken on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're church members. I've never seen you break down in church crying or something, but she you must have one. had those ex. <laughs> she has seen one. <laughs> she has seen one. Yes. And that day, she didn't even know what was going on. But yeah, continue. Yeah. <laughs> So tell us what it is like. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. It's a thing to say, no, I, I, I'm able to handle it. I don't, I don't succumb to pressure. But mm. you, are, you are agreeing to the fact that there had been pressure. Mm -hmm. So tell us what it, it is like. Mm. Um, so I'll say that it, it's more or less a daily battle. Mm. Yes. Um, so one of the things I always say on my, on my blog is the fact that, look, sickle cell is not a disease. First and foremost, the first thing you need to do is a mental shift. 
So I don't see it as a disease. I don't see it as a burden. I see it as a health challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a health challenge. I'm perfect. I am fit and I'm whole. I mean, there are other health <laughs> challenges. There are people living with cancer. There are people living on oxygen, for crying out loud. Like, there are people that they have to be giving them blood. There's even every HIV, you know? There's hepatitis. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's so, a lot. we shouldn't just put that whole barrier when it comes to, oh, you hear sickle cell and that's it. So, for me, I think when it comes to the emotional toll it takes on me, it's more or less like a daily battle. Because no matter how much we put up a front or no matter how much we try to stay strong, there's always a constant reminder of how life sort of limits you by virtue of the condition that you have. Mm. For example, my father would tell you that if not for her health, she probably would not even be in Nigeria to start with. She probably would just be in the abroad. She probably would just be in Australia because I'm like that person. I can't jump till I don't even care. I'm, I'm ready to go like far off and you know just live my life. But you have to constantly constrain yourself and say, yo, woman. What is that toll it takes on you? Do you even want to try more at this point? Like when what happens and ugh, Okay, so for like two years I didn't want to try anything. Mm. I didn't want to. I didn't I didn't even want to go down that route. Because you don't know what the next person is going to the approach the next person is going to mm -hmm. you know, give. So and I'm very upfront about it. I have friends who they even tell me that they are AS, and then when you get into it, they will not start telling you the reality that oh, okay, actually it's not AS, so it's SS, you know, and then start here to see how you can manage it. Mm, yeah, I'm upfront about it so that you don't even stress my life. If you can't phantom it, don't come my way. But for like two years, I didn't really want to go into it. I just wanted to live my life. Like, look, let's not go down that emotional tom turmoil mm. all over again and start thinking about it. But as much as I like to prove macho, I'm a lover girl. <laughs> <laughs> like you love girl. I'm a lover girl. Like, I'm serious. I'm a uh -huh. lover girl. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I actually want to have a family. Mm -hmm. Maybe not have plenty of kids, but yeah, I love love. I mean, I mean, Who love. does it? <laughs> no, some people don't. <laughs> oh, really? And some people say they don't. Mm. But me, I love love. So I'm a lover girl. So yes, I've rewrote my history and, you know, script technically and say, look, let's give it a try again. Mm -hmm. There would always be that person who can handle it. Yes. There would always be. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's good to hear you talk. It's good to know that you're having it together. Mm -hmm. You're yeah, not like everywhere, pity party and all of that. <laughs> so, let's, let's get into what this year is going to look like. You know, I've seen I've seen videos on TikTok say this year, 2022, about relation is going to be negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> what are you bringing to the thing? I saw you post something like that, and I'm like, surely. Yeah, well, I mean, this year is, we have to decide what are you bringing to. I'm the table, so you've got to tell me what you're bringing to me. <laughs> you know, I'm the whole table as I am like this, my dear. I'm not bringing anything to the table. Me, I'm the table. Yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> Shola, what, what are you saying? I, I don't understand. You are the table. I'm the table. I'm a whole table. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <shall I> look, <laughs> Let's uh, keep our fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I see that blush, though. There seems something promising in the works. Yeah. I said I saw the blush. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, there's something promising in the works. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's looking very promising is um, he's been able to accept it. Mm. You know, one of the things he says to me, I cause I mean, you have insecurities when you are when you are my condition, you have insecurities. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to wake up tomorrow and they serve you breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, my dear breakfast. <laughs> you know, not in the negative <laughs> one. Uh, you don't want to wake up tomorrow and there's breakfast there in bed. <laughs> you don't want to see how is it that kind be, of breakfast. That's going to be terrible. You know, but one of the things he says to me is that um, we know it. It's, it's safer. What about if you get married and something else shows up on the scene? Are we going to leave the marriage because we can't, because mm -hmm. we just feel that it's a bit too much? At least this one we know. This one we know that part of the major problem you have is that you are stubborn. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll be praying to God to curb your stubbornness in the process. So I think that boldness for me is one of the reasons why I say, look, there's something promising. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe the EBN show will be there to cover the wedding. Yeah, you know. 
<laughs> yeah, oh, no, I, I can't I'm wait. Dying. Honestly, I can't wait because I really wish you well, uh, I know. and I, and I pray for strength for both you and the guy, Amen. and for everyone out there who is dealing with pressure, yes. even if it doesn't relate to health, and for those who uh, for whom health is a major issue, mm -hmm. I pray that strength will be given to you to navigate this this process. Amen. Now, as we begin to round off. What I've, I've asked you how it had been. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have told us too partly how you've been able to deal with it. Do you understand? Yeah. Having to accept it mentally that oh, this is what it is. Yeah. What are other things you do to bring yourself back on your feet, mm -hmm. especially when you've had these episodes mm -hmm. and the numbers? How many breaks of breakups have you had? Ah, oh, well. <laughs> I know the number of breakups have it seen. <laughs> Stop calling it breakfast. <laughs> Oh my god! Okay, so. Okay, I had seven. <laughs> Even more oh, than Jesus seven. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, reach down. <laughs> so I have a degree. You know, degree. you know, really, I, I, I know how it feels because mm. when, you, when you've had this many, yeah. and you know you tried, yeah. I'm not absorbed. Is it absorb? Absorbing myself mm -hmm. of blames. I could have probably in some of those, I could yeah. have done better. But um, at some point, you begin to second guess yourself. That is one thing it does to you mm -hmm. when you enter into a relationship, like it's going to work, and someone blank tells you to your face that this girl that is calling me, if she comes, we're going to have sex. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm supposed to be your girlfriend. <laughs> and you're telling me that to my face. <laughs> and so you begin, am I not good enough? There's mm -hmm. so many questions yes. you're beginning to yes. ask yourself, like, yes. okay, what is the problem with me? Yes. You begin to feel you are the problem. Yes. You, you begin to feel you're not enough. Mm -hmm. And for some, they begin to sell themselves cheap when it comes to... So I love... Another thing I've gotten from you is the fact that the boldness is still there. Yeah. You know your worth. Yeah. Despite the health issue. I mean, you're not saying, eh, okay, will you come and have me? Like, that can do a lot to you. So yes. I know even from my part. So tell me how you've been able to bounce back despite all of this okay so before i even tell you how i've been able to bounce back you know something you just said just made me remember the last breakup was very funny though i mm. mean it's one thing you to know that this is the reason why this person is breaking up with you and it's another thing for the person to just ghost you hmm. and you have to mentally ask yourself all the time what did i do wrong Mm. You know, at some point I felt like, okay, maybe I'm the problem, you know, maybe I'm a bit too overbearing, maybe I'm this and that. Um, someone even said to me when I was on the break period, that look, <laughs> if we don't do your own, let me do my own. That was to me that you are using your stubbornness to chase them away. Hmm. Okay, hmm. all right. <laughs> you know, but it was, at that point, I started to question a lot of things about me. I questioned a lot and a lot and a lot of things about me. And I mean, I'm just going to say this because of anyone who's probably going through that process. First and foremost, I have to tell myself that look, there is nothing wrong with you. Hmm. There is nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with you. There is no perfect person. So I, I shouldn't expect perfection from myself and demand perfection from myself when the next person isn't demanding the same from mm -hmm. him from him or herself so why should i stress myself to try and please you when you you are not even thinking about mm -hmm. it right so i'm a full option a full full breed in all specs spiritually physically <laughs> cv <laughs> <laughs> you know so i think one of the ways i was able to bounce back was tell myself that look there's nothing wrong there's mm. nothing absolutely nothing wrong that it isn't working now doesn't mean it won't work at some mm. point, right? So tell myself that's reality. Mm -hmm. Accept it. Because it's one thing to even tell yourself. You know when you've told yourself, you wake up, you look at the mirror, they say, but special speaker, mm -hmm. look in the mirror, look at that person, mm -hmm. and tell yourself, this is it. You will go back to your bed, you will continue the tears from where you stopped yeah. the tears. But constantly, over time, I had mm -hmm. to accept that, look, there's not really nothing wrong with me. Then again, I think that sort of just helps me decide the kind of person I really wanted to settle with. Because again, if I had by any chance settled with any of these options, I would have probably been living a frustrated life. Mm. A really frustrated life. Because you know it is one thing for you to accept that this person has this condition. It's another thing for you to accept that this person, despite her condition, is ready to live her life. 
Hmm. You know, there's that phase where, okay, you have this condition, and then the person wants to help you cage you that you have not caged yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't cage myself. I, I'm, I'm a bird. I'm free. You know, so one, the person has to accept the condition. The person also has to accept that irrespective of the condition. Condition. This is how she has chosen to live her life. I'm living my life. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to try and say, oh, yeah, let's pet it. Let's, you know, let's calm down. Let's soft pedal. Mm -mm. I want to live my life. I want to live impact. I want to have something for people to look back on and say, look, irrespective of her condition, she was able to do this, mm. this, and this. So those were the things I had to come to accepting. I had to redefine what I really wanted. Like, look, if it isn't this, then let's forget it. Mm. Let's let's forget about it. Then there wasn't any point at which I was begging anyone to date me. You want to date me? If you don't want to date me, carry yourself and be going. Mm -hmm. Right? Because it's not my health alone that you should see. Mm -hmm. You don't even, more. See, you yes. don't even see my health. Mm -hmm. If I don't tell you, you won't know. No. You wouldn't. I know someone that I look way stronger than she is. Despite the fact that she's AA. I am. I, I look it. I carry myself way stronger than she does. So, if I don't tell you that I have this condition, you can't know, right? So why should I? Why should I now make it the a, first thing that comes? Yeah, in the face. I tell you for you to know, based on the fact that you need to know this is what it is. What but not you, yeah. tell you for you to pity me, mm -hmm. because I don't even pity myself. So why should you even start? Why should you even be the one to pity yourself? So those are the ways I was able to bounce back. It mm. was a lot of work. And then most importantly, I had a very good support system. Mm. I'm a daddy's girl. Everybody knows I'm a daddy's <laughs> girl. So my dad, um, I mean, he's probably one of the most important persons in my life. My mm. dad and my mom, they were always there to encourage me back up. Like, look, baby, there's nothing wrong with you. There's mm. nothing. My dad would tell you tomorrow that if it was possible for us to trade places, I would happily trade places with wow. you. You know, but I mean, that's enough was enough love to go around. They had enough, enough love to go around. And mm. my family were just, they're just fantastic. They don't even, until maybe there's a breakdown before everybody remember that, ah, it's true. So that's it. It's, oh, oh, that's true. Oh, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> then after the breakdown, we move on. We continue, Again. We continue life. New. Because even me, two days, three days, I'm trying to pick up my life and move on. You know, so that support system was really, really, really. Really helpful. Mm. You have said a lot of things, mm -hmm. and I know that there's someone out there who is encouraged by what you just said. Yes, and marriage pressure is a thing. Yeah. I think another way to help ourselves is if you're under pressure, admit that you're being pressured. Yeah, there's a way we'd like to put up a face, like, you know, everything is okay, I'm fine. But pressured. if you understand, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I if, was pressured. Yeah, too. if you if you know there is pressure, mm -hmm. you admit it, then yeah. you can know how to bring yourself out of it yes. then another part is if we need to help people ask how we should help them yes yeah yes. because you said yes. something like it's another thing for someone to want to accept you then want to accept how you want to live your life yes. so sometimes I, I could be that person too who wants to just be there mm -hmm. who wants to hijack your life and mm -hmm. say let me be do this one mm -hmm. for you you find out that you're trying to help someone and the person resents you or the yeah. person has reservations. Yeah. It might just be that you're not help rendering the kind of help mm. they want. Yeah. So let us always seek clarity. Yes. Let us not just assume this is what this person wants. Yes. Let us ask them, is it okay for yes. me to do this for you? Yes. Would you like it yes. if I do this? Just don't go and feel they are someone they are being <laughs> on their behalf. And know, yeah, yeah, we too should learn to talk. Yeah tell people this is what it is yes. this is how i feel yes. if your parents are pressuring you mm -hmm. you should tell them you should find a way to communicate to them because i know african parents have an a in pressuring on that particular conversation i still had this conversation with my mom recently and then she said that okay so i wanted to get a better space um where i was staying i wanted to move and get a better space and my mom i mean if you watch this just don't bother <laughs> my mom said uh, don't you think that you will chase men away, you know, if you get a better space? Because you get a better space as a single lady, you're being perceived to want to start acquiring things, and mm -hmm. then you know, some men feel intimidated. Anyways, I'll leave Ebu to deal with that <laughs> <laughs> category of men that feel really? intimidated by women's success. I'll leave her to deal with it. But some men feel intimidated, and she know she said that, I mean, out of care, right? Mm -hmm. But I said to her, I said, Would you rather? I marry a man that tomorrow he will come and dump me for you. 
because he feels he can't handle mm -hmm. the condition that I have. And that conversation ended, ended there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so please. Yeah. If you're a parent, and now, even if you're a, a young parent, your children are still quite young, mm -hmm. please prepare yourself for the future. Yes. Sometimes we don't even realize we start pressuring our children. Mm -hmm. Be, mm -hmm. Like, we're not aware. We think we're looking out for them. Mm -hmm. So the same thing our parents did to us, some of our parents, mm -hmm. please don't pass it on. No. Let's be better parents. Please. And please, this year, I'll come for your wedding. Oh, Invite me. Oh, I'm ready to rock. I oh, don't shit. usually do Ashwabi, Ashwabi, but there are some of you. <laughs> <laughs> that my girl will be like this. So please keep up faith. Yeah. Keep up hope. Yes. Don't look at your, yes. don't look down on yourself. Yes. Feel complete. As I said it, said it in the last episode when I was talking about gender disappointment. Yeah. If you have not seen it, please go back to it. Yeah. And subscribe. Yes. Because if you have not subscribed, what are you doing? What's, what's your usefulness in our life? <laughs> She I, said I, it. I, I need to know. Like, <laughs> like, please tell me exactly. Like, and don't just do watch this? it. Watch it to the end. You know? Like it. You know? And share. Yeah. And now, please. There's a bell. There's a bell. There's a bell. There's mm -hmm. just a bell that yeah, you down there. Not click it. <laughs> just click you it. You don't back. be knowing when we are dropping content. You know? Ready. And you should follow that. Yeah, talk well, a bit are, about it. We're on holiday. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know when she started. But there are some videos you've done. Oh yes, there that are I've some watched. videos yes. I've done. Um, I mean, so we're on YouTube. There's DAPS Network on YouTube. Most, most importantly, there's DAPS Network on IG. D A S P. Yes, D A S P Network. Mm -hmm. Then there's most then DAPS Network on IG. That's D A S P underscore Network on IG. You could go back to you know previous videos mm -hmm. that I've done. It will help you a lot in knowing how to deal with people that live with sickle mm -hmm. cell. But again, when she started, I said. I praise your courage. Content is a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. So we're we're currently trying to think about how mm -hmm. to go about it. So I, I'm thinking of exploring the clubhouse space mm -hmm. where I get to bring up a lot of people who are living with sickle cell and we get to talk. Mm -hmm. Now clubhouse is safe because it's audio, mm -hmm. you know, and there's no there's no vi visual and all mm -hmm. of that. People get really um constraint to talk about their situations because they don't want you to put a face to the name and all that which is one of the barriers i'm trying to break mm -hmm. look i'm sick who said deal with it if you want to if you want to jump and please whenever to transform yeah. back out, transform <laughs> right. back your business. so whenever that happens mm -hmm. i'll be willing to let people know because this is why we're here thank you so much shali for yeah. coming Shola <laughs> oh my god thank you so much honey thank you for having me it's yeah. been a pleasure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.